So somebody asked me the other night, what is the best advice for becoming a better spear fisherman? And thinking about it more now, my answer would have to be mastering your weapon and knowing your prey. We're gonna go over one of those topics today, which is mastering your weapon. So for me, it's a pole spear in the Bahamas. It's illegal to use spear guns. And we pretty much just dive with twine slings, pole spears. So we're gonna kinda do like a how to use a pole spear today, but more like a tailored version of how I personally like to use a pole spear. It's not really a standard, it's just a personal preference of how I prefer to use it. After that, I'm gonna jump in, go get some dinner. So let's get to it. Welcome to the life of Luke Malus, a charter fishing captain, born and raised in the Bahamas. I never went to school. I grew up on an island, living an epic life of adventure through the good days and the bad days, conquering my fears and living life to the max. Luke Malus, the Bahamas. Like and subscribe to follow me along the way or book a charter and create your own adventure. So the rubber goes over your four fingers, like so. You get an overhand grip and an underhand grip. Reach for the front of the grip and draw back, doing a simultaneous quarter twist of the rubber. If it's a roller pull spear, just draw it straight back. Don't twist it. Once you've loaded the rubber, extend your arm out, rotate your arm to lock it in place, keeping your arm high to your eye for a good peripheral aim. Here's another look. Lifting your arm up high to your eye, rotating your arm and locking. Here's what it looks like in real time. This form right here is a proper technique. What you don't want to do is drop the spear low away from your eye like this because you lose your peripheral aim. This really helps to dial in your aim for better accuracy and more consistent stone shots. But don't feel bad, at the end of the day, we all still miss. In this clip, I have the GoPro right in my line of eyesight, holding it to my face just exactly where my eyes are positioned to give you a good example of aiming down the spear. When you're aiming at a fish, you're focusing on the fish. You're not focusing on the point of the spear. Just like a target and a gun. When you're aiming at a target, you're focused on the target. You're not focused on the sights of the gun. Here's an example of holding the spear too low and not getting an ideal peripheral aim. Zoom in there so you can see it. When you're swimming along, you always want to keep the spear pointing towards the direction of the fish. Always have the hand on the rubber in the ready to load position. That way, you're always ready for the shot. For tracking the spear, it really helps to get two hands on there so you can really work it around. If you have a fish flashing by you really quick, you can just swing it around and lock and load. When you're hunting the bottom, either a spedo or a guado, you want to keep the spear on top of your working hand, crawling along the bottom and using it almost as like a pool stick. If you're playing pool, you have it in your hands, you can creep along the bottom, but keep your spear off the ground, not to bang around on the floor and make a bunch of noise, and always to be in that ready to load position. So here we have a perfect aim and a perfect shot. Notice I keep my arm extended and locked tight. This drives the velocity of the spear. Here I shoot again, 
but notice I flinch my arm back. This absorbs the velocity of the shot and limits your range. Know your lethal range. Most pull spears have a lethal range of three quarters of the length of the actual spear. Some very well made spears can even shoot as far as 95% of the length of that spear. The best way to do this is to take as many practice shots as you can at what you think is the maximum range and just trial and error. Put the time in, do hundreds of shots until you finally get the idea of where your range is hitting. Never clip your float line to the back of your spear. Just, just no. Just, just don't. Just don't do it. Pole spear manufacturers spend months, if not years, trying to design the best and most efficient spears. And all of that hard work is ruined as soon as you clip on the back. It just drags the surface area of the clip, float line, and float unnecessarily. Instead, just clip on the rubber. It works so much better. When you're swimming around or diving, don't fight the drag of the spear. Keep it streamlined and a part of you. On deeper dives, I like to use a pole spear as a pendulum. Notice I tuck the spear onto my hip and let gravity pull it straight down as I streamline my body along the spear. Control the power range of your spear. If you're going for long shots on big fish, really pull it back to the full power and hammer it into them. When you're going for lobster or small fish up close, only pull it back halfway. It's just enough to penetrate it and so you don't hammer your spear tip into the reef. If you guys want to learn about spear guns and other awesome techniques for diving and spear fishing, I've learned so much from Ryan Myers, good buddy of mine one of the best divers in the world. Go check out his channel. He's got a whole series of epic videos up there. It's gonna be totally up your alley. Well, I just got dinner and it's time to head back now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.